we are very, very excited um, to have you all here with us to talk about how to build an Algolia wizard experience on Adobe Experience Manager. So if we go to the next slide, You'll get to see my face here. I'm Devanshi Beta. I'm an Alliance Director here at Algolia. I'm joined by Micah Garside-White. He's a Lead Channel Solutions Engineer here at Algolia. Um, and Sajid will, will be here as well to answer any questions, uh, both at the end during our Q&A, but also throughout the session. So definitely make sure to keep using the chat, keep those questions coming, and we will answer as many of them as we can in real time. So to go through what we're going to talk about today, we're going to start with an introduction into Algolia and AEM. Um, from there, Micah will go into depth about how our indexer display um, modules work, and then we will go into a demo. So why are we talking about AEM? Adobe Experience Manager is used by many of our customers to build digital experiences and manage large amounts of content across multiple regions, locales, channels. When you are investing in a lot of good content as a business, it is important that you make it discoverable and ideally to the right person at the right time. And so that's where both search and discovery come in. So if we go to the next slide, we know that AEM out-of-the-box search is pretty basic and requires a lot of setup, so most will use a third party. For those looking for a state-of-the-art search with faster performance, AI-driven relevance, I'm sure many of you learned about neural search yesterday, um, and more control for an author or merchandiser, they look to Algolia. So here we will focus on how we can approach integrating with Algolia um, with AEM, for the best developer experience and the highest level of control for the author through a wizard experience. But let's take a step back and look at the implementation process um, overall. So we look when we think about implementing Algolia, there are four main steps. The first will be to index that content from wherever it exists into Algolia, into our search engine. The second step will be configuring that search engine. The third will be building the search front end experience. And the fourth will be uh, creating that feedback loop where we start to understand how users are interacting with the search and discovery and feed that back into our AI engine. So if we look at the next slide, to do the indexing step, we have API clients that synchronize data between whatever database you have and the Algolia search engine. And one layer above that, we have our API clients, which offer benefits like more efficient indexing at scale, network retry strategies. And with our OSGI bundle, many AEM developers will choose to use our Java API client to do that first step of indexing their AEM data to Algolia. Next slide, thank you. Um, on the front end side, one layer above our API clients, we have our front end libraries. So this will be the easiest way to build the front end experience with um, these existing building blocks. In the past, many of our customers using Adobe Experience Manager with Algolia have built their own front ends within AEM using our APIs. And while this makes sense in certain situations, there are a lot of advantages to using the UI libraries instead. One of those being higher performance. Um, you get the most out of Algolia when you are querying Algolia directly, reducing network latency. Um, the Algolia front-end widgets basically directly query the APIs and render the results of each keystroke in milliseconds. And then we also ultimately improve core web vitals um, for the site and thus SEO. Also, you have all the building blocks ready to be plugged in and customized from like the search bar to autocomplete search results pages, facets, carousels, um, all dynamic and, and ready out of the box with, with best practices when it comes to search user experience. And lastly, it's, it really accelerates the implementation time 
um, when using supported uh, building blocks like this. So when we look at our content architecture um, for Algolia, next slide, thanks, Micah. Um, Adobe Experience Manager will many times be implemented alongside a commerce engine or other platforms. It's important that we can aggregate all the data um, to create a unified search experience. So looking at this from the bottom up, we can index content from anywhere using APIs and integrations. And for AEM specifically, we have three options, a crawler, the Java API client that we just discussed, or our AEM indexer, which builds upon the Java API client, but builds a seamless indexing experience with AEM. Once the data is in the search engine and optimized, we can expose the most relevant content and data to the user through the front end. Again, there are a few options using the APIs, using the UI libraries built upon those APIs as those building blocks, or with AEM, we take it one step further by embedding those widgets into our AEM components. So if we go to the next slide, these are the AEM integrations that we will focus on today. And we can go to the next slide. Thank you. And this is what we ultimately call the AEM Accelerator. So the AEM Accelerator comes with an indexing module and AEM display components, as well as um, a SIF, a commerce integration framework module to help with any commerce implementations. Each package contains the content, components, templates, configurations, OSGI bundles, and they are independent of each other so that they can be used together or separately depending on project needs. And beyond the integrations, the other benefit is having customizable dialogues that can be set up for AEM authors to control the front end experience, as well as the ability for developers to extend the code to meet any requirements. And this is available on cloud managed services or on-prem. And what we are really excited about is what we've built for the front end, because beyond providing the best of our front end libraries with an AEM, we're powering the AEM author to control the search experience through a dialogue wizarding experience. So everything from what content they want to showcase to the ranking behind what articles will show up first on the page to maybe having a carousel of related content at the bottom of, of an article. The idea is that an AEM author can control the glass without having to rely on a developer for every single change that they want to make. And ultimately, we, are, we want to help our, our partners remove inefficiencies and optimize their time to value. So ultimately, it's about making all of your content more discoverable. When you have intent from a, from a user, it is the biggest opportunity to engage them with the right content. Pantera does a great job of this, exposing all kinds of content from their products to pages to manuals, um, which are needed when someone is you know, trying to purchase pool equipment. And we also have the opportunity to really get creative and inspire um, with your content. If you've been to the Breville site, they have a quiz powered by Algolia as the intelligence engine to engage users on what sort of coffee machine to buy. And they engage um, and inspire with, with the recipes and a lot of beautiful assets to assist in their buying experience. So with that, I'll hand it over to Micah. He will go deeper into each of our AEM integrations and share our approach with you so that you can either think about how to use the accelerator we have or even build something of your own. Good morning. We're gonna start with the indexer package talking about how Algolia embeds into AEM and sends data. The indexer package includes several components. Uh, the first is the UI to configure and control the data that is being sent to Algolia. An AEM instance or an AEM instance can contain multiple sites. This could be for a worldwide deployment or for a, a multilingual deployment, as you know, and we give the control uh, to the authors to be able to decide what content is going where for the optimal uh, de the optimal sending of data and reducing network latency. This is critical uh, for importance. 
for global or multilingual sites. Uh, the process itself for keeping everything up to date is an event-driven process, and it's triggered on the event of publish or unpublish. So every time an author makes a change to publish or unpublish a page or a fragment, it is sent to Algolia as that change is made and committed. The last and the really cool one is the logic for a full re-indexing of pages, assets, and or content fragments. Uh, the reason that I believe it's particularly beautiful is the ability to actually uh, flatten or combine the data between the DAM, the data asset uh, management utility, and the pages into the record that the customer is going to see and interact with without having any additional logic or programmatic coding that goes into it. Here we can see that the AEM indexer package is available as a cloud service in AEM, so it's easy to navigate to within the AEM experience and configure. This is a UI screen for a single data pipeline or data configuration that is sent from a, uh, to Algolia from a site. This means that again, we can have a author come in and decide for that site, how that data is gonna be sent, what that data is gonna look like and where it's sent to, uh, both from a uh, a location for proper data residency and for performance and optimization. The configurations include the attributes to send to Algolia. The asset types include, uh, or excuse me, the asset types to include or exclude, the templates to include or exclude, the pages to skip, the paths to skip, and the URL. The configuration will determine the schema of a record or how that data is sent to Algolia, stored, and delivered, and the inclusion or inc exclusion of records, uh, pages, or elements that are sent to Algolia will show what is discovered by Algolia. Here we can see the control interface for scheduling. The control is set for each site so that different business logic can be configured for each data set that is sent to Algolia. For example, to be a little bit less abstract, this means that we can have a cron job that is set for a local time refresh of data uh, for midnight for every single site at the appropriate local time. Uh, this allows us to control dr drift and be able to hit that prime window for refreshing without impacting end users. The next package that we're gonna be looking at is the UI package. And this is really how the, the magic of Algolia is surfaced to an author in a clear, crisp and concise way via dialogues and the accelerator. We have, uh, as we've talked about, we have the widgets or the elements of Algolia, and those are uh, coming in a couple of flavors. The first is the instant search, and that instant search is wrapped around the dialogues, and that powers both the search and the browse, both coming from the same API. We have the recommend components. These are conventionally put at the bottom of a product page or an article to be able to continue that journey to increase the likelihood of conversion or to increase the average order value. And the last element is the global search element. What appears at the top bar powers that modal or autocomplete, and that's coming from the autocomplete library in Algolia. We talked very briefly about the API client libraries and the APIs. I wanted to give you a diagram of how we are iteratively building the uh, developer experience to build the front end. So everything that is coming from Algolia is coming from these REST APIs, and that's the foundation of that discovery experience. On top of the API client library, so on top of the APIs, we have the client libraries. We've looked and we saw that there's 15 different flavors of languages. And what it does is it wraps around the APIs, exposes all the endpoints and methods with the additional configurations, as well as handling some advanced things like the retry and fallback logic, because Algolia does not have a single point of failure. And it also has additional logic that's really powerful, like the replace all objects uh, that's used for rebuilding seamlessly an index. The reason that we have this is it's needed for the SLA. So uh, because Algolia has multiple points that it's managing and a single point may go down because of a failure, but we don't want the entire system to go down, we always require using the API client library. In the API client library, we do expose front end elements. So you could use a Java or a .NET library to build the front end, but that does leave the entire rendering to the developer. 
On top of the API client libraries, we have instant search and autocomplete. Instant search is really built for that landing page, be it a category page, a home page, or a search page. And autocomplete is built as that modal. Instant search is the only one that has widgets, but those widgets help define all of the elements that are commonly used and to quickly, efficiently uh, build a front end experience that's fully customizable. We'll see that in the mobile libraries and autocomplete, we don't have widgets, but it really does increase that time to development. To my mind as a programmer, I think of this as, you know, C is the REST API, that foundational, really low level control. Then C++ with those object libraries sits on top of it. And then the instant search component or the autocomplete component really becomes like Java, where you've got all that extra cool stuff coming in with the memory management, really removing it from your, from your plate and making it more powerful. Here we can see a diagram of how the authoring is done. And this is really built for understanding how um, an author is interacting with the system and how that system is compiling the experience. So the author creates a cloud configuration and this cloud configuration is what's built into stored in AEM. And that defines where the index is and what properties to index. So it's really talking about how we say to AEM as an author, I want this to be stored here so that I can use this when I'm building the front end. The author then creates the templates. These templates are built by power users that understand HTML and are approved so that they're ready to use for authors that may not have that experience. Those, uh, those templates are created and defined and published and available later in the experience. The author, uh, in point three, the author then adds the instant search component to the search page, identifying where in that page we are going to expose Algolia. And then the last thing that we're doing in the search page is we're exposing in the hit templates or how we're going to decorate the results in that search component. The next slide dives into how a end user is going to interact with the web page and how all of the author's work is really exposed to that end user. The customer navigates to the search page. The instance in, in step one, excuse me, in step two, the instant search component renders on the page, so it really builds that block. In step three, instant search uses the instant search model, what's built into AEM, to retrieve the Algolia configuration, the author's content, the hit templates, and injects a data, a data JSON, or, or sort of the script for how it's all going to be built. That data JSON in step four is loaded into the integration client libs and in step five, the integration client libs uses the JSON to initialize and configure the Algolia instant search JS. Outside of all the technicality, this is an example of what a federated search UI powered by a single API call to Algolia is gonna look like. We can see that we have multiple carousels that are provided. Each carousel has a different way of decorating that data and displaying that data. We see that we have tabs at the top, which are acting like filters for how we're going to display a more refined interface. Uh, the carousels are all powered by an individual queries, but all of those queries are combined into what's called a multi-query in Algolia, or it's a single API call. So that means that for each keystroke, you're going to send a single API call to Algolia. With, within tens of milliseconds, you're going to get back that response, and you're going to be able to update it. And that really allows you to have that search as you type experience, that blazing fast speed you're experiencing, expecting from Algolia. We see in the top, there's the search bar. This is the parent object with facets and metadata, like results numbers, facets, pagination, and details are associated to an individual query in the index. While there is complexity in how the components operate and display, the AEM accelerator limits the scope of the changes that his author is making, really to bite-sized chunks, and uses the dialogues to define how the information is set or defaulted to make the experience both user-friendly and extensible for power users. Let's walk through how this is done. So first, we're going to start with the parent object, which is the search object. The search object is the parent for the multi-query. A single application must be used for this multi-query. 
And we can see here that the required information is actually quite small. It's an application ID and an API key that is either used uh, for public search permissions or it's a more nuanced object uh, that limits uh, accessibility to data for RBAC controls or B2B price books or rate limit. Additional information can be set in this widget and inherited by later objects, but those are all optional. Here we can see the dialogue that wraps around the search client embedded and, and really sort of makes that experience of deploying it and creating it user intuitive. We see in the dialogue that we have these embedded hover on information text. So if there's something that a user is not familiar with, either because it's their first time or they've forgotten, they're able to hover on and understand more deeply what's being asked for and how that data is being used. We can also see this is a simplified interface uh, to include or exclude some additional elements that may be beneficial, like the search bar or the hide and show no results. The next element we're going to look at is the child to the search object. So we said that there's a federated search, and each of these children is what's called an index object. This is an example of the code for an index object. The index is associated most commonly with the hits widget, which is the results that we're displaying decorated by the template. The required information is the index name. The information can be inherited from the parent object, so it could just come through nat uh, naturally, or it can be overridden too. The goal here is to be able to allow a uh, an author to come in via dialogues and inject or sort of snap on additional Legos of that index or those results they're looking for as they're building that federated experience step by step. Here we can see the dialogue that wraps around the index. The required information is the index, but we can see that there are additional defaulted configurations in the tab and other tabs. We also see that there is the template tab. This is where you would select how the content is decorated, and there is a drop down menu for selecting published uh, templates to display or decorate the information. Or for power users, we're also able to have a click button interface to actually create your own with HTML. We just spoke about using templates and we talked about how they're stored. Here's an example of where the templates are stored, authored, and published as content fragments then AEM authors can choose from these templates in the display or create their own. Last, we're gonna look at the siblings to the index. These are most cost commonly known as the facet objects. The facet or the UI is displayed as a filter, excuse me, the facet is a UI displayed filter and they're siblings to the index. This means that those facet items are only the things that are available in the search results. So as you search, that number of facets may shrink because the number of facets available in the search is gonna be removed. So you can never have that horrible experience where you're doing a search and you filter on something and all of a sudden you have no results. The required information in the container is the anchor in the HTML and the attribute name inside of Algolia that's used for filtering. Facets include ranges, menus, refinement list, hierarchical menus, Boolean checkboxes. And for developers, this can also be an area where you would create your own type of facet. They also include additional logic like facet search. So you could even go into a facet and do a search, sort by logic, display limits, and show more. Here we can see the dialogue that wraps around the facet. The required information here is the facet type and the attribute that anchor is taken care of in the back end. The advanced functionality is really not exposed here. Most of this is developer friendly and not needed by the authors. So this really says as an author's coming in, they can define a facet, they can define the basic behavior, but if we really need something that's super crisp or having a great experience, we might need a developer to come in and augment it. The core principle for the AEM accelerator is to make the foundational authoring experience quick and easy while exposing optional configuration and additional control. This allows the baseline author to come in and control and create what they're looking for. And then that power user is able to come in and really create something advanced, again, without a single line of code. This is done by requiring the minimal amount of data to be input, 
combining simple components into a single interface. So for example, we saw that search object with just a little checkbox where you can say, I want to show my search bar and creating the concept of selected approvable templates. Here we can see the core components of Algolia that are exposed in AEM. This is the baseline of how everything's put together. We can see that the search-oriented approach, excuse me, we can see that the object-oriented approach allowing authors to constrain, create the interface piece at a time, like blocks, really limits the need to understand the big picture when you're just snapping it together. And that limit of complexity or change makes it a lot more approachable. Now we're going to stop and go through a walkthrough rather than slideware of what this experience looks like. Here we can see that we have the weekend control. So this is the search object that we are actually coming into and building as a author. The first element that we're gonna look at is this is the element that would be used for building that search object. We can see that, that while there's no information deployed in here, it actually is picking up from the core configuration. This is an inheritance from the indexer and can be overridden if you want. The reason that this is exposed in such a way is it's super easy if you're using the default indexer and you just wanted to inherit that. Uh, but this is also built to be extensible. So each module can be deployed without the other modules. This is where, again, we would put in the application ID and the API key and be able to decide how that element is going to be displayed. As we jump out of the search object, the next element we're going to look at is the index object. So here we can see in the index object, this is inheriting and associating to the search element. And we're able to define the index, which is recognized as required. We can also then add in some additional decoration into how it's done. And then we have the full gamut of the configuration that we want to do. So again, it's really, if you want that basic experience based on the defaults, it's a single field you're filling in. But if you want to have an advanced sort of capability, this is where you would define the templates. You can add in additional things like stats or even some really cool advanced features that are there for the power users. That distinct is a pretty cool one because what it does is it deduplicates results. And this is a powerful tool that's used for being able to say, I understand all of the underlying SKUs, but I only want to show the product. So maybe we're actually putting in all the products and we have different SKUs for the colors. I can combine that all into a single interface where I can understand that I'm searching for a blue shirt, but I can see in there if there's different styles of blue in the shirt that I want to have without having to flood your results with many different items. From the index, we're going to go over and we're going to look at that sibling object with the facet. In the facet, again, we are seeing that we need to define the type. There's a limitation on the types that are exposed to an author based on the AEM accelerator. That limit of choice makes it easy and approachable, but they can select what they're looking for for a 90, 95% use case. And there, we're also referencing a facet attribute. Those facet attributes are saying, what data in Algolia do we want to reference? So as I scroll down, we can see that there is a federated experience with multiple indices that are exposed in this authoring window in an easy way to interact with. But this is not how it's displayed to a user. This is a federated experience, but we want to have it displayed in a slightly different way. So we're going to take a turn and look at the preview that's available. So in the weekend site, we're going to start and we're going to look at how the authoring experience turns into the website that a user has created. First, we're going to start here. And this is the global search element. This is the autocomplete that's created. And we can see that this is a federated example where we're able to look at products, pages, and FAQs. This is fully extensible, and we can build whatever we're looking for. As we go from the autocomplete, we're going to go into the search page, which might be known as your PLP or your SRP. 
In the search page, we can see that there's a great number of widgets here. And below, forgive me. So the, the tab is not working, so I apologize. This is unfortunately the, the case of a live demo. What this should look like is a tabbed interface with the different uh, widgets available. We can always come, excuse me, we, we will, this should work and there is a bug in the system, so I do apologize. But we can see here that we have what the user expects to see as well as a refinement and a full search experience within the search page. In here, we can see that it's a search as you type experience. If there were tabs, we could go through the tabs. We can see that each of the keystrokes is reflected in the results that are coming through. What's particularly cool about the experience here is we're also able to expose content fragments as additional marketing content. Conventionally, this can be banner, but we can talk about decorating your results uh, with in injected content for more customized solutions. So that's an example of how the AEM Accelerator is able to build that front end experience for the SRP or PLP. The last thing that we are going to go into is what does that front end experience look like for the browse where somebody might be coming in and going through a click path to discover things with less intent. We can see here that we actually, we have a object that sits inside of the magazine page where Algoli is powering with his advanced AI knowledge, the experience of the magazine. This can be federated multiple times. This will give you a federated view of the entire experience and allow a user to come in, see something, and then give an additional signal as to the intent they have and navigate through the page. The last item I wanted to go through is I wanted to go back to this and we wanted to look at like, what does the experience of a user come to and how can they decorate a product page? And this is pretty amazing because we know that as a user comes to a product page, they have a very high intent and this is a great way to capitalize on that intent to either increase the likelihood that they're going to convert, saying, if you like this, you might also like this. This is an AI-powered recommendation thing. Or if you choose this, you may also want this. This could be considered you may also like and completing the look or however you want to label it. But this is a very powerful way to engage with that user on a product page, on an article page, or on the checkout to be able to increase the likelihood of conversion and to increase the average order value. I am gonna stop sharing. And that is all the information with the live walkthrough. And now we'd like to open ourselves up to the Q&A. And Micah, maybe in the meantime, I shared another link with you. Do you want to share that with our audience here? Do you see? I am looking for it now. You want to share, share yours, Devanji? Yes, let me. Yes, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's not a defect. It's, uh, it's because you're an author. The WCM mode parameter is not there to disable the authoring uh, library from loading. So even though you've set, even though you're in preview, it didn't recognize. It's more of an AEM thing then. Yeah, there we go. Can everyone see my screen? Okay, so here, this is the experience where you're now getting that tabular approach across different types of content. Um, and we can see results in each category. Some other interesting things that we can show is you can set up rules. For example, a query like bike sale, which will dynamically render a banner. This banner has been built as an experience fragment in AEM. And we very simply in Algolia tie that query back to the experience fragment link. And then we're able to create this type of uh, content experience based on based on search requests 
And also uh, on the product detail page uh, where Micah was showing the related pro products and frequently products that is actually using our recommend components, uh, which is tied to the recommend product uh, from Algolia. And to add in there that recommend, we looked at two of the models. There's additional models so we could power additional experiences. This is also used in the home page so that we can show trending. And that trending can come across in two flavors. The first is a trending on products, and the other is a trending on facets. That's most commonly used so we can show like trending brands or trending categories. I guess there are no no questions. All right. So yeah, I'll just make a plug. We have a blog series about all of our integrations across Algolia and the Adobe stack. Um, we recommend that you check that out if you're looking for more information about how um, Algolia can work both, both with AEM, but also with Adobe Commerce or Adobe Launch. Um, and you can always reach out to any of us with any questions as well. Yes, uh, for the Adobe launch, uh, it's a community pro project. So as as you've uh, been into the uh, DevCon sessions around AI, that's more that's important for getting events being sent to Algolia. And Adobe launch plugin that we've built allows you to have that control and send in click and conversion via Adobe Algolia launch, actually. Sorry, Adobe launch, uh, <laughs> but we've built an extension for that, yes. So just to sort of pile on that, it's, it's really important for all of those events to come in to be able to train our AI. So we can definitely handle <clears throat> that initial discovery and, and ex excite your users with that performance. But as we wanna have that really smart capability that comes from Algolia, we use the events and we use them all across the discovery in a new exciting way. And I'll share that blog about Adobe Launch here. And I think with that, we can wrap this up. Um, thank you all for tuning in. We really appreciate your time and being able to share what we've been so excited about. And definitely reach out if you have any additional questions. Thanks all. Bye-bye.